On April the 14th, the IMF approved the $500 million uh, in the debt cancellation, or rather debt payments, uh, for six months, that is, uh, for 25 countries, 19 of which are in Africa. This is in line with its call, along with that of the World Bank, among others, uh, that debt relief is crucial to help facilitate post-COVID-19 recovery. However, a recent report by the Brookings Institute showed that uh, China is a bit tepid on its participation in this endeavor, uh, given that China is now regarded as the single largest creditor to Africa, with about 20 percent of all African uh, public debt owed to China. International analysts uh, foresee that Africa still stands at a, uh, you know, precarious post-COVID-19 corner. Joining me live from the United States to discuss this is Judd Devermont. He's the director for African Affairs at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Uh, Judd, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us on the uh, Global Business Report on Arise News. Um, from your perspective, how important is debt relief uh, to the financial picture for African nations that are fighting against the economic effects of COVID-19? I think debt relief is critical. We know that Africa is now entering a recession for the first time in 25 years, that the World Bank thinks that there could be as much as a 5% loss in GDP, and debt servicing, which is what they've got a moratorium on now for six months, is critical. Debt relief is even more essential. And I will add to that that it's not just about debt relief or a moratorium on service payment, but there also needs to be some stimulus packages. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed of Ethiopia has called for more than $100 billion. And these are going to be so essential because the economies on the continent have just been throttled uh, by this disease. Trade has been disrupted. Investment has been postponed. Because of lockdowns, there's no uh, very little economic activity. And importantly, remittances are down as well, which is a key input. So we need to have uh, a huge influx of money to keep these economies going and get back to a, a better growth picture. Thank you for that. Now, the, uh, according to the uh, Jubilee Debt Campaign, which is an organization, or rather a coalition of organizations in the UK dedicated to debt relief, about 20 percent of all African government debt is owed to China. Is debt relief for African nations fighting COVID-19, is it a non-starter unless uh, China is involved? I think China has to be involved. It's not a non-starter because, uh, that, as you said, only 20 percent of debt is Chinese. About 35 percent is commercial, and the other 35 percent is both multilateral or Paris Club. So China has to be a big part of the, de of the debt conversation. It's not a non-starter. We need relief right away. Uh, but what I would say is that if the countries aren't working with China, if the West doesn't do debt relief at the same time as China, uh, I think that there is going to be a real problem here. What Western donors are worried about is if they give relief, then that will just allow China to get paid off on their debt. So there has to be a unified approach here that both the multilateral donors, the, the Western donors, and the Chinese donors have to work together concurrently to reduce the debt burden on African countries. Great stuff. Okay, so I, I was, I'm, I'm going to throw the uh, Western nations in here. I was going to ask you if China isn't, um, if they're not quite involved in this, because they were asked about this by Reuters, I think, their foreign ministry, and they're a bit iffy as to, you know, whether or not they would commit to debt relief. If they're not involved, um, my initial question to you was, would that damage relations with, with, uh, with African nations, but also to the Western nations that would, I guess, feel cheated, uh, would that also damage relations with them as well? Yeah, I think China is in a very precarious position. I think if we just walk back just a bit, we can look at the relationship between China and Africa right now during COVID-19 and see it on a really fast-moving roller coaster. So obviously the disease came from Wuhan, then the Chinese really stepped up on terms of medical assistance, and then we saw what happened in Guangzhou, and now there's this issue of debt. So China has to find a way to be a responsible player in uh, Africa's recovery, and that is debt relief. And right now, they're talking about some moratorium. They'll probably do it on non-concessional loans. They have a history of canceling uh, some of that type of debt, but there's just so much more that they have to address if they are going to be a good partner for Africa. And the West is going to hold them accountable, for sure, because much of the continent 
uh, is in debt distress, and a percentage of the smaller percentage of those countries in debt distress are because of China. All right. Now, you have uh, an article on the CSIS website titled, COVID-19 is an African political crisis as much as a health and economic emergency. Can you explain further uh, on what you wrote there? Yeah, so I think about COVID-19 in terms of tests, governance tests for the continent. So first, can governments actually do the things that they need to do to be responsible to their constituents, being able to uh, deliver assistance, being able to make sure that there's service delivery, to make sure there's security services, don't abuse the population to challenge disinformation. So that's test number one. Test number two is around leadership. Much of the continent's leadership are over 65, which means they are high at risk uh, for COVID-19. And many of those leaders are in their 70s and 80s, which means that hypertension and diabetes and other diseases even increase their risk uh, profile even further. And if we look around the continent and we can look at Nigeria and say that number of leaders are already self-isolating or tested positive, uh, obviously uh, the president's chief of staff uh, Abikiari had just passed away. In West Africa alone, we know of nine government ministers that have COVID-19 in Nigeria, several governors uh, that have COVID-19. So we're having a leadership challenge where we see much of the continent self-isolating or some leaders self-isolating. And then finally, there's a democratic challenge, 15 elections between now and the end of the year. And African governments, in conjunction with civil society and the opposition, have to decide whether or not they are going to hold those elections or whether or not they are going to delay them. It's my view that there's no right or wrong answer. There's only good or bad process. So in Ethiopia, we saw a good process. Prime Minister Abiy worked with the institutions and with the opposition and agreed they weren't going to have the elections as scheduled for August. In Guinea, we saw a bad process where the president decided to go forth with a very controversial referendum to have a third term, and he did that uh, with the opposition not agreeing to it, and we saw very low turnout, and now he's going to be able to run for a third term. So that's uh, the really the challenge about sort of consensus building and having a unified elite, political elite, working together to make the best decisions for their country. Judd Devermont, uh, director of the Africa program at the CSIS, the Center for Strategic International Studies. Thank you so much for your time. I had a whole lot more questions for you, but maybe we'll invite you back to the show uh, to get, get answers to those. Thank you so much, sir.